Welcome back to Gowerton Parkway. Thank you to everybody that subscribed and liked my post so far. This is my second video and this is based not on Gowerton Parkway but my exhibition layout Talbot Lane TMD. This video will serve as a layout tour obviously due to the size the tour is probably not going to be that extensive but it'll be nice to talk you through what I've done, what I've achieved and what I hope to achieve for the layout going forwards. First and foremost, I'll talk to you about the size and the idea behind this layout. This layout is six foot long by one foot wide. The layout is broken into two sections, a four foot by one foot scenic section and a two foot by one foot fiddle yard. This layout has been designed to fit in the back of a car um, so it can be taken back and forth to various exhibitions. it has been to one exhibition so far in Cardiff with a few more booked this year, but I'll go into the details of those later on in this video so you can have a look at them and see if you decide you want to come and have a look and if I'm coming near your local area. So firstly I'll talk you through the era of the layout. The era of the layout is exactly the same as Gowerton Parkway. It's um, very late 90s, so 1999 through to 2006-2007. The reason I've kept the era this, this way is because it's the era that I'm interested in and it saves me buying stock from two different eras for my various layouts. The baseboards for this layout are Tim Horn baseboards. So it's a Tim Horn kit. Um, bought that online back in July. So this layout is not very old. Um, it's relatively new, not even a year old yet. Baseball kits were fantastic. Went together very, relatively easily. Uh, this layout is fully DCC operated, as is my other layout, Gowerton Parkway and is controlled via a Z21 controller, as is the other layout upstairs. I forgot to mention these points when I went through the last video. Track work is all Pico Code 100. So what I do next, I'm gonna end this clip, I'll take the, take the camera off the tripod, we'll get up a bit closer and have a look at some of the details that I've included. Okay, so we're over to handheld camera now, so apologies if this starts to get a little bit dodgy. So, starting at the far end of the layout, on the left hand side, we've got the maintenance shed. I've gone for a one lane backman uh, service depot. Um, I, w I was going to actually build one myself, but in the end I decided this would be the easier way to go. This is more durable for chucking in and out of a car and taking back and forth to shows. Perhaps one day it'll be, uh, it'll be changed over to something that I've scratch built, but for the time being, it remains as it is. So, moving down. We have a small porter cabin at this end with a little nod on it to the other layout. And we've got the signs if I can get them in focus uh, with the layout's name. So this is an EWS era layout but with the old rail freight distribution signs remain. Just to give it that little bit of flavour of a layout uh, of an era that's in, in transition. Um, so you've got that signage there. And then on the front of the depot, we've got the Talbot Lane EWS stuff. So all of the signage is made by myself. I make it on a combination of Adobe Photoshop and InDesign and print it all on a standard printer. And buildings at this end of the layer are all low relief, all scratch built. Um, and just provide a pretty easy backdrop, something fairly neutral for the trains to run in front of. Now, I haven't included a back scene as you can probably see here. Um, the reason behind this was I, I couldn't be bothered, to be honest, to get the fiddly back scene to stick to the back of this. I just went with light blue. Um, I was eager to start getting scenery on. And by the time the scenery was on, it kind of got to a stage where it was too late to go back. So that's what I've stuck with. And uh, that's how it is. Probably would do a back scene next time. But due to the height of these uh, low relief buildings, I don't think it takes away from it too much, to be honest. So the layout has three main lines running in from the fiddle yard via a three-way point and a head shunt coming back towards the three-way point. You can see here down into the yard, we've got one lane that goes onto hard standing, one lane that goes into the shed, and one that's just a siding. I've gone for a fairly overgrown look on the on the near side in here, um, nearest to the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, overgrown that a bit with static grass and the like, as you will see. Middle side in, running through hard standing, just a hard hard standing area so I can run some cars, have some nice little vehicles on the layout as well. 
And then on the far side, you notice that this line is served with overhead line equipment. There's only one reason the overhead line equipment on here um, is present. That's just to justify the fact that I can buy a Batman Class 90 when they come out. Um, obviously upstairs, there's, there's no need for one. So I thought this was the easiest way to justify it. If anyone ever pulls me up on buying it, I've got my justification. Winner all round. Looking back down to the other end of the layout, you've got the three-way point that I mentioned. You can see, I will just pull back a bit so you can see where the uh, track then goes off into the other head shunt. Um, obviously, this is all a very simple track layout. I wanted to keep this really simple, something that will work well at exhibitions. All of these points are electro frogs. Um, the ones upstairs are all insole frogs. I've gone for electro frogs on this as it's a uh, it's an exhibition layout, and for that purpose, it needs to run 100% smoothly. Upstairs runs fine, but at an exhibition, I don't want to take any risks, so I've gone for electro frogs. The point motors are all the, the gauge master ones with uh, decoders built into them, and the polarities are switched by the gauge master polarity switchers. I can't remember the codes for them, but um, if you if you look them up there, they're, they're easy to find. Just drop me a comment or something if you're if you're interested in knowing. And I I'll do the do the necessary and post links for you to those. Uh, so the layout runs off under a road bridge next to a Royal Mail depot. I've got a little bit of an embankment here that I've sat the the retaining wall on. The reason this went onto an embankment, it wasn't originally planned for it to go onto an embankment. Um, the, as I built the layout, I found out after I added the overhead line equipment that there was no way that that bridge um, was going to accommodate overhead line equipment without being raised. So the only way I could get that in and to fit was to raise everything up onto an embankment. So it's an accident that it's on an embankment, but it's turned out to be a bit of a happy accident because it looks a hell of a lot better than it was before. Uh, all of the trees, sea foam trees with various knock leaving added. And I've added random bits and pieces of detail. So I've got carrier bags and stuff whizzing around that have been caught in the trees. Um, there's examples of carrier bags and that there. These I've done myself on, um, Again, Adobe InDesign and Photoshop printed onto photographic paper at the highest possible quality output that I could. Well, the walls, etc., they're basically just um, what they called Metcalf Metcalf kits. Went together quite easily, nice and lightweight for transporting. Good stuff, really. Quite pleased with them. You'll note that the layout is actually lit, um, so we've got lights all the way down the layout. So this is to provide a nighttime run-in scenario if I want to. At exhibitions, I actually have a lid that sits on top here, which darkens the entire layout. So you do actually get a bit of a nighttime effect. So people that saw the layout in Cardiff will be able to vouch for that. It did work quite well in a show environment. The layout itself is lit with a, there's a strip of LEDs that run just behind here. Let's see if I get the angle on, I'll show you. <laughs> There you go, you get the idea. Provides a nice even light source across the layout. Looks really good. Keeps it nice and bright and fresh at an exhibition. I find that these exhibitions you tend to have some dingy halls that you're invited into. So um, this, this is a bit of a winner. Make sure that the layout is always nice and crisp and easy for everybody to see and to photograph. Oddly enough, one of my favorite bits about the layout is this sign that I have made. And this was made by the company Custom Layout Signs. Absolutely fantastic company, great service. And these signs, I can vouch for them, are amazing. They come in a nice uh, wood they're made from, with screw holes in the back that make them easy to mount to the back of your uh, back of your layout. So I'll just uh, hope we get in a bit closer to show you that. There's some awesome, awesome relief on it. It just really adds and finishes to finishes the effect of the layout fantastically have that sign there. So just a little bit of information on that. I'll see if I can add a link to to uh, Custom Layout Signs Facebook page in the description to this video. Now as I mentioned you can run the layout in a nighttime configuration with the lights off. I'm really not sure how well this is coming out on the camera so I'm not going to spend too much time on it but uh, you get the gist. Um, in the pitch black this lighting does flood the layout quite nicely provides a nice nice different uh, perspective on the layout and it does work at exhibitions when that lids on which really does add another dimension 
I haven't seen many layouts try and portray a nighttime scene purely because of the complexity of doing it, but something in this size makes it quite easy to do that. Hopefully that'll give you a fairly decent overview of the layout. Note the continuity issue now, yeah, I know these low codes have moved around since the last clip. Hopefully now this video you'll have enjoyed this. I would have said um quite a lot less. I have been consciously trying, probably still weighing the double figures if you count through it. Just going to round off this video now with a running session featuring a Class 66 fitted with Zimo sound and a twin Dumbo speaker. Class 47 fitted with two roads and rails mega bass speakers of which I'll be doing a video of at a later date to review the speakers. It's got Lego Man Biffo sound and a Class 37 again fitted with two of those speakers and Lego Man Biffo sound. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching. Um, please spread the word and share these videos around see if we can get as many subscribers as possible. I'll leave you with a running session and I'll see you next time. Thanks.